That was fantastic. All right, well, next up, I have a little change of pace, I believe. Our next performer is Debbie Blair. She's an artist, performer, clown, independent woman, a dancer in the carnival band. And here she is, ladies and gentlemen. Give her a warm welcome, Debbie Blair.
Well, they could only get about uh, a grant about fifteen dollars in a good week through the drums, although there were a lot of them. That was not enough. Then they asked, "What about the ladies?" <laughs> Do we dare? One asked cautiously. They'll never forgive us. <laughs> but in the end, it was decide decided that the ladies would understand their plight. Have they always been understanding? And the magistrate was instructed to make out a stack of warrants. A few mornings later, the chief of police set off to clean up the town. And before the day was out, he apprehended all the ladies of ill fame on his list. The city clerk buried his nose in the document he was reading. Bertie Stewart, he said with a voice laden with embarrassment, you are charged with keeping a house of prostitution, guilty or not guilty. He raised his head and Bertie looked him dead in the eye. Guilty, she said cheerfully. The mayor, who had un undertaken the duties of mag magistrates with great reluctance, suddenly roared, what? He exploded with a kind of indignation that only at the bottle of courage, only that, sorry, that only a little bottle of courage can inspire in a man. His mustache quivered as he pounded the table. How dare you stand before me and plead guilty to find the laws of God and man in this young and prosperous city of Vancouver? Then, without waiting for the lady to reply, he flung one arm in a gesture that took in the entire court. Twenty dollars, he, he thundered, and that goes for the rest of you. <laughs> well, twenty dollars per lady. That's not bad. They were saved. The city fathers never forgot Bertie's sacrifice. In fact, the city got into the financial every time the city got into a financial bind after that, the court remembered that it was possible possible to resolve that crisis quickly and efficiently by rounding up the ladies and fining them for their trespasses. At least twice a year, the ladies were marched into court to save the city. Oh. And in time, there came to be somewhat of a holiday atmosphere <laughs> to this court parade, with the ladies showing off their finery to the man who lined the sidewalk to grab the court room to ogle them. The ladies always pleaded guilty, paid their fines, and then wandered home to await the customers they had signed up on their way to court. <laughs> Since they too profited from the occasion, the laborers harbored little resentment. They simply regarded their fines as a business license. <laughs>